Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of Valpo Football Preview, along with head coach Dave Cicchini. This is Todd Eichow. We start, uh, it's Butler week, but we'll start by looking back at what really was a heartbreaking loss against Jacksonville, a game in which you moved the ball well, the defense did what you wanted to, stop the run, they didn't get the takeaways, and as you told us a week ago, turnovers could be the most important factor in any football game. They were on Saturday, sure. unfortunately. Sure, No, I mean, if you looked at our last two wins, uh, we were plus 10 in terms of takeaways. We had uh, six turnovers that we were able to force against Marist, six more that we were able to force against Moorhead, and we protected the ball relatively well, only one turnover in each of those games. Well, while we did do a great job defensively, did an outstanding job of containing uh, a great uh, triple option running attack, uh, we weren't able to take advantage of a couple of turnover opportunities and get some takeaways, so we weren't able to turn the ball over on either defense or special teams, and unfortunately we picked the wrong day, the wrong game, uh, to be careless with the football on offense. We put the ball on the ground three times, only losing one of those, uh, and then there were the three interceptions. You had opportunities, obviously, to win the game besides that, and you look at in the fourth quarter, you got down inside the 10 twice and only got three points. That really hasn't been the hallmark of this team. When you get right. down there, you guys have been punching in. Sure. It was just kind of like one of those days. Sure, right? exactly. I mean, halfway through the season, we led uh, the nation in terms of red zone offense, and we had done such a great job. Uh, a lot of confidence in our kicker uh, kicking field goals, but we had gotten the ball. Uh, we'd scored a lot of touchdowns down there, and, and uh, unfortunately, we just went out there and, and played some of our worst football of the day uh, down in the red zone, and, and that really cost us. All day long, we had a great game plan. We were running the football well, had some big plays running it. The screens were working well. The drop back plays, we had so many passes that were 20 yard, 30 yard type game passes. And, and uh, you know, we only punted once the entire game uh, because of how well we were moving the football. We just weren't able to finish those drives. I think, Dave, one thing that is really, uh, two things that have really changed since early on in the conference season to where you are now. Number one, the offense has become really more balanced. And mm -hmm. you guys are running the football much better. Maybe you can share on why. Is it the offensive line getting healthier or coming together? But you are running the football better over the past month, and that certainly has helped the offense. Yeah, it, without question. I mean, and, and we've been able to, it, you're right, it starts up front. You know, our, our offensive line, they, they are uh, a veteran group, but still relatively young. You know, we don't have a single one of those starting five players that's going to graduate this year. They're all going to be back again. And, and that's that, that key to every, uh, year to get not just a little bit wiser and, and more comfortable with the scheme, but just physically put on weight, put on good muscle, uh, you know, get just be, become a better football player fundamentally. And, and we've managed to do that. We've gotten a little bit healthier. Jack Jarnigan uh, continues to play better and better with each passing uh, week after, um, you know, being out a, a week uh, early on in the season. So uh, that certainly helped. But, but also the play of our tailbacks, you know, Jarrett Morgan, uh, has stepped up uh, since he came back from his shoulder being banged up a little bit and he's playing some really good football over the past couple of weeks and as we saw on Saturday Kyle Cartalis stepped up and had a huge game uh, he's really stepped up and played some good football recently and, and those five guys up front who have been starting for the past month together since Jack Jarnigan has come back you expect to have them all back next year right? yes absolutely every single one of them <laughs> that's, that's a good thing and then on the other side of the ball um, you guys are stopping the run, which yes. was a struggle at Campbell. It was a struggle against Drake. But now you guys are stopping the run. And although uh, Jacksonville had some big runs late in the ball game, uh, for the most part, you guys are making plays at the point of attack. And that has changed over where you were a month ago or sure. so. Sure, absolutely. You know, Nick Turner, uh, Drew Snoffer, really, they've always kind of been the emotional leaders of our defense there. They, they keep stepping up and, and, and doing a great job there. We have gotten a lot more confidence. You know, we, like I said, I thought we did an outstanding job against a team that was ranked, I think, fourth in the nation in rushing going into the game and containing them like we did. Yes, the big disappointment was they had done such a good job for really three and a half quarters, and we threw the interception with three and a half minutes to go. Yeah. We had all three of our timeouts left, and, and we call that a four-minute drill. The, the opposing team's trying to run out the clock, and we're trying to force them to punt, and, and that was the biggest letdown. We knew they were going to run the football. They knew they were going to run the football, and we weren't able to get some stops, and, and Jacksonville, unfortunately, was able to run out the clock there at the end. But uh, uh, to take away that you know, one negative, it was a great performance and really a, three great games in a row in terms of stopping the run. All right, now you got to put that behind you and look ahead to Saturday. Uh, it's a Butler team, which is certainly playing extremely well right now, and they've done it 
this year. You look at the numbers. They've done it with some really good defense. Mm -hmm. They're shutting teams down. Uh, and they also can run and throw. They've sure. got that uh, versatility as well. Yeah, no, on, on defense, they, they're definitely a team that prides itself on stopping the run, and that's been one of the keys to their success is they've uh, limited uh, their opponent's rushing yards, and they've done a nice job of turning the football over as well. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, you know, they've really kind of evolved their offense to a two quarterback system. So you'll see one quarterback come in and he'll be more of the traditional drop back passer and then they'll bring a second quarterback in who's good at running the option, good at the quarterback runs, some some of the type of wildcat offense style type plays, but still is a threat to throw the yeah. football as well. So they they're kind of two different offenses depending on which quarterbacks in the game and they've been successful with both. Sure. And Obviously, their ability to stop the run means, hey, here's a bounce back week for Jimmy Seawald. Sure. I mean, you're going to have to run the ball. There's no question about it. It's a yeah. great challenge how mm -hmm. well you've run. But a lot of onus is going to be on Jimmy this week. Yeah, yeah, no, he's got to step up and, and learn from his mistakes. You know, he played an amazing football game on Saturday despite a couple of critical mistakes, and you just learn from him. He did so many good things, completed 70% of his pass. It was going to, you know, just eclipse that 300-yard mark yet again. So he's playing... Uh, some really good football, uh, but he knows there were a couple of plays he wish he had back. A you know bad read here or there, and just a, an overthrown pass here or there. But you take that away, uh, he has continued to play good football for us, and we're going to need him to take that next step here this Saturday. You know, I think what's really neat about this Butler Valpo rivalry over the years, and, and Butler certainly, uh, they've had some ups and downs. And, and if you go back like 30 years, you'll see where Butler beat Valpo like 10 years in a row, and then Valpo got. Butler five years in a row or so, and then, then Butler started winning, 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 and winning, and, and now it looks like we're at a point where the games are gonna be close each year. Sure. And I think two programs, and they're gonna be close because both teams are now moving into the, I think, the upper half of the league. Uh, and this is like no different. This looks like it's going to be a tight ball game again. Yeah, yeah I, I think there is a, a lot of comparisons that you can make that, that you could argue that both teams are very, very similar in terms of the talent level, and and uh, both have had some great wins and, and some hallmark wins during the seasons, and both teams have had a game or two that they felt like they could have won but let slip sure. away, and and uh, it, it's a, and it's an amazing rivalry, and, and this is something that you have uh, that uh, very few teams in the PFL have a you know a hallmark game you know 76 times and and that the, the teams have uh, played against each other and and it's just the pageantry that goes with it the the emotion the intensity it, it's a game that's like no other. All right, Dave. Good luck on Saturday. The battle for the Hoosier helmet. Good luck. All right, thanks, Todd. For head coach Dave Cicchini, this is Todd Icahn. Thanks for joining us this week on Valpo Football Previews.